Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're doing well. Today, we got that new Roma, born in Roma, the new Womo, whatever you wanna call it. Valentino Womo, born in Roma, Coral Fantasy. It's a, it's a name. I'm not gonna say it's a good one, but it's what they came up with. So I've been wearing this a little bit. This is kind of a glorified first impression for the most part because I've only given it a few wearings. So this is like somewhere between a review and a first impression. But I'm gonna let you guys know uh, how that's gone for me. Let you know what I think about it and whether you should check this one out and also show you the presentation, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into it and let's check out Coral Fantasy. <music> Let's kick everything off with the presentation, shall we? So here is the box. You got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, the size, the concentration, all right there on the front. Nothing up top, nothing on the sides. Ingredients on the back. And the box does have a little bit of a texture to it. And then on the bottom, you got your batch code. 38UN00N. And here we've got a look at the bottle. You got the name of the house right there on the front. Bit of a gradient, so darker up top, lighter at the bottom. Cap clicks into place. Previously, with the older original Womo bottles, it was just a built-in atomizer, but now they've changed it to a cap uh, with the normal style atomizer. On the bottom, you have a sticker with your badge code, and there's a little Valentino logo on the inside of the cap. So where do we start with Coral Fantasy? When I covered this on This Week in Fragrance, I said that the name Coral Fantasy reminded me of The Walking Dead. Oh, that's terrible. That's probably the this, this cheesiest, stupidest thing I've ever said on this channel. The fragrance though does have a uh, coral pinkish hue to the fragrance on the inside. So there's that. So the scent itself, how does it smell? Is this one worth checking out? Which is important now because all those new releases that I've talked about over the past you know, two plus months, seems like they're all finally becoming available in the US right at about the same time. So you're gonna be spoiled for choice here potentially over the next few weeks. Well, it's probably a good thing for Coral Fantasy that I didn't do this in the more typical way, which is where I unbox it for the first time and smell it for the very first time on camera. I basically couldn't wait. You know, I was just kind of hanging out. I had this on my desk and I was like, I'm just gonna open it. Because had I done it the more typical way where I open it up and smell it here in front of you, my initial reaction was, I hate this fragrance. I could not stand the scent. I hated Coral Fantasy. The first time I sprayed this on, I was hit with that red apple in the opening and it's really prominent very fresh, definitely synthetic and sweet. But as it transitioned into the mid, I despised it. Oh man, like I wanted to rinse it off my skin, just scrape it off or get a flamethrower and just burn my arm off. I couldn't stand it. I know I keep saying that and harping on it, but really, I thought it was gross. Mainly because there's this transition point from the opening into the mid where that apple starts to meld together with uh, like geranium, clary, sage and lavender in the mid and the way the geranium is used here is a little bit similar to how it's used in K Eau de Toilette from Dolce & Gabbana. Now, this fragrance does not smell like K. It doesn't. But in that transitional period where that geranium was coming out melding with the other notes, I legitimately would smell it and just like my nose would curl up and I would go, ah. So the first time that I smelled this, it would probably be if not the worst new fragrance release that I've smelled this year, one of the worst, one of like the bottom two or three. But I didn't give up on it. I've sprayed it on more since then. I've worn it more times. Like I said, maybe three or four times. And now I'll tell you how my thoughts have evolved. So the opening, you've got bergamot, cardamom, and red apple as the notes. The red apple is still the most prominent note, really sweet combines with a, a little bit of a green cardamom. The bergamot is kind of like an additional layer to the red apple. So it kind of slots in underneath the red apple and, and gives a little more, a little more depth, a little more nuance to that fruit in the opening. But it's mainly this juicy, very sweet synthetic red apple. Now what's strange is the first time I smelled it, as I said, I hated it. I did not like that apple. And yet now, after wearing it three or four times, 
I like the opening. Yeah, it's heavy handed with the sweetness in the opening, but I think it's really pleasant actually, which is a complete 180 from when I first smelled it. Now, the mid, I still don't like. I do not like how that geranium comes across. I don't like how it melts together with the, the remnants of the apple, which fades pretty quickly. I'll say that the red apple, it's so sweet and very attention grabbing, but that lasts for just a few minutes. But I don't like how that geranium clary sage specifically meld together with the remnants of that apple as it heads into the mid. It's like an overload of ambroxan mixed together with geranium is how it comes across. So it's almost like smelling white noise. It tickles my nose hairs. It kind of sets my olfactive sense into overdrive. It, it's not pleasant. I don't like it. Just bump the bottle there. And this one's interesting because in the dry down, the sweetness seems to come back up again. So you get hit with this blast of sweetness in the opening, that red apple bergamot touch of cardamom, and that fades a bit as it heads into the mid. But then in the dry down, when the tobacco comes out, it slowly ramps back up. So the tobacco leaf, when I first pick it up, it's like a dry tobacco is how it smells. It doesn't come across like a pipe tobacco or anything like that, like a dry tobacco leaf. Mixed with a bit of patchouli and vetiver, uh, for the most part dry is how those notes come across as well. And then the tobacco starts to slowly pick up sweetness the longer that it's on my skin. So what initially came across as sort of a dry tobacco leaf melding with uh, vetiver and patchouli with most of the earthiness or dirtiness stripped away from the notes, eventually starts to turn into more of a, a sweet tobacco leaf. So this is a fragrance where if I were going through a store, Sephora, Macy's, Ulta, whatever, and I picked this up in the store, smelled it for the first time there, there's a 0% chance that I'd be leaving that store with this fragrance. It would be one of those deals where I just write it off, you know, and I say, oh, anybody that likes this is a moron. This stuff sucks. It's trash. I hate it. But given more wear and kind of knowing what to expect to where I can process it a little bit easier, I've grown to like it, except for that mid. I don't like that. So I don't know where that leaves me with this one, kind of somewhere in the middle. You know, the opening I actually really enjoy now, strangely enough, but it doesn't last very long. And then the dry down is okay initially, but then the longer it's on my skin, it smells better. So it's a fragrance that has positives and successes, but then also cons and failures at the same time for me. I would say though, that, you know, if you smell this, give it a try, and the way the mid comes across to you is not overly aggressive, to your nose, then this would be probably great for you. Because if that mid were tweaked for me to be a little more enjoyable for my personal tastes, I would say this is a really nice release. It's like almost there, but not quite, almost. Now, do I find a little bit of a similarity to the previous Born in Roma fragrances? Little bit of a similarity to Yellow Dream maybe, but I think this sits alone as its own fragrance. It's not one that I would, you know, say, oh, well, if you have that, then this is redundant. I don't think that's the case at all. And you could also say maybe that there are bits and pieces of other fragrances, you know, take a bit of this, bit of that, bit of this, and put it in here. And, you know, that's what you're getting here, like a mix of a bunch of other things. But I actually think this stands alone pretty well as its own thing. I know I brought up K Eau de Toilette uh, earlier in the video, but I really think on the whole, this is pretty much its own thing. So if nothing else, that's nice that it's not directly lifting things from uh, other fragrance lines because uh, Womo Born in Roma, I think lifted from Invictus pretty heavily. And then Yellow Dream, I think lifted from Stronger With You pretty heavily. This one though, a little more unique than those two. Not saying it's hyper unique or anything like that, but in comparison to the line, I think it's a step in the right direction. Now let's talk about performance and all that good stuff. In terms of projection and longevity, this is above average across the board. Projects really well for the first couple of hours, and then your longevity, you're looking at seven, eight hours or so. So it's got a good punch, it's got a good push, you're gonna be noticed with this fragrance. It's not the type of scent that's gonna sit really close to your skin, and it's not the type of scent that's gonna turn into a skin scent in two or three hours. In terms of seasons, it does have a good amount of sweetness, both in the opening and the dry down. So it comes across more like a neutral weather scent, spring and fall. You could pull it off in winter. Uh, I probably wouldn't go for it in summer. Daytime or nighttime use, either one. 
It's not the type of scent that's going to lean, you know, super fresh and bright, more of a daytime scent. And it's not really dark and heavy either. It splits the difference. It's one of those scents that you can wear about anywhere. It is the type of scent due to that sweetness and the way that it's presented that's going to appeal more to younger guys than older guys. And honestly here, if you're looking for something that's gonna get you attention, get you noticed and pull you compliments, this will do that. It's very sweet. The performance is there, so it's gonna project. People are gonna be able to smell it easily. It's gonna last. And even though I myself don't really enjoy the mid a whole heck of a lot, it still is that type of scent that's gonna get you attention. So if that's what you're after, this will do that for you. And frankly, I would say it'll do it for you better than uh, Born in Roma, the original, and even possibly more than Yellow Dream because that opening really truly is attention grabbing. And when I had my wife smell it, she was a big fan too. On the whole, for what they're trying to do with the scent, I think it works. Because I have to think of who this is made for, who this is marketed toward, who's gonna really probably buy this and wear it. And when you take all that into consideration, I'd say this stuff does it really well. So there we go, Womo Coral Fantasy. You know, thinking about it, just sitting here right now, this is easily my favorite of the Born in Romas. Yeah, so I mean, that's something. I would choose to wear this over the original every day of the week. And I like this more than Yellow Dream because I think it's a little bit more unique. So there we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna roll. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.